I'm Chris Flores, and today we're going to build a Dutch tool chest. It's a very efficient design. It doesn't weigh a lot, it's got some robust joinery, and most importantly, it can hold every tool you need for hand tool woodworking. So we're going to lay in our baselines now. And uh, the baseline, if you're not sure what that is, it's this gauge line here. And uh, this gauge line, which represents the, the length of the tail, uh, is the most important uh, part of the dovetail layout. Uh, it tells you when to stop sawing uh, on the tails. I'm going to draw this out so you can see what this looks like. What that does is it makes a half pin there and a half pin there. The second pair of dividers is going to be used to split up this one giant tail we've created, this condor tail, uh, into as many dovetails as we would like to have on our case. I'm going to use four. Four is a perfectly uh, adequate number for this sort of chest. You can use more if you like. Uh, up to seven would be fine. Uh, but what you do is you say, okay, I'm going to lay out uh, four dovetails. And uh, so I'm going to just sort of guess that this looks like it's about one-fourth of the, uh, the, the width of this, uh, this, this board. And so what this pair of dividers does is it lays out with every leap one tail and one full pin. I like to start uh, with, uh, at the far corner away from me because this actually, uh, with this orientation, it relaxes the rake of the teeth. So the teeth are leaning back a little bit, which makes them easier to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the weight off and I'm going to nibble back and if the dust obscures the line I blow it away so I just nibble and blow and now I've created that little trench that is indeed 90 degrees to the face and I can take my square and confirm it if need be. And now this pin wall right here this is the offender. That's where the extra, the extra meat is. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in there with a chisel and we're going to pare away a little bit of uh, the extra material. Now what's important to note is that this area that I'm sort of knifing in right here, so this area right here where the knife is, that area you can pare away without affecting the appearance of the joint on the outside. I call it the free space. So I can get in there with a chisel and remove some of that extra meat and that should uh, give me some relief uh, when uh, the uh, joint goes together again. Make sure that's clean, put it back in place, put the beater block on there. Usually it's good to use a harder wood. That started just fine, so now I'm going to take my mallet and drive it. So we got back to where we were. I looked down there and it didn't crumble anymore and we're about halfway in now. And so I'm going to continue and I'm going to put the joint together completely. The last thing to do before we glue up the sides to the bottom is to cut that 30 degree angle on the sides so the lid will be slanted instead of square. The way I do it is I just take a sliding bevel and I've set it to 30 degrees using you know just one of those little protractors you can buy anywhere and so I'm going to draw that 30 degree angle from the top corner and then I'm going to carry that line forward using my square. It doesn't have to be exactly 30 degrees for this all to work, just somewhere in that neighborhood. With that line laid in, then I just need to cross cut that off with a little hand saw here, a little panel saw. So with the shelf in place, the next step is to cut the little notches here in the front shelf and in the bottom, and that will allow the sliding lock 
to come in here and lock the case tight. So I might clean that up with a plane a little bit, but really now this is 100% functional lock. It goes down in, so when the lid comes down, the lock stays stuck and the front stays on. So this is essentially the body of the tool chest and just have to go work on the lid now.